Hello and welcome back. So let us try to understand what is inferential statistics. So inferential statistics is majorly useful in looking at samples and understanding the population. What is population and what is sample? If you are trying to do exit polls, all voters in a country is population. And if you want to do survey on a particular city or a village, no, by con by contacting only 100 or 10 or you know maybe 1000 people then it is called a sample so a subset of the whole data is called a sample the whole data is called as population in this case when you are doing exit polls all the voters in a country are population in a given village or city or town if you take a bunch of people and trying to do opinion poll then it is they are called as samples so, when you are trying to do exit polls, you will not get a chance to talk to every voter in the country to assess who is going to win in these elections. So generally, we take samples of people from some villages and towns and castes and streets and try to get the opinion and then try to assess how the, you know, the result is going to be. In this whole process, the statistics used is inferential statistics. The inferential statistics is the techn technique used to assess this in this whole process. So let us try to understand the central limit theorem, the most important theorem in, 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 in inferential statistics. So the central limit theorem makes two statements. One, the mean of all sample means from a given population will be approximately equal to the mean of the population. In a simple words, if you try to take n number of samples from a population and for each sample you are trying to take a mean and then calculate mean of all those sample means. Suppose that you have chosen 100 samples from your population and for each sample you are calculating mean. So you will have 100 means and you are taking mean of all those 100 means. That's going to be equal to the population's mean. That is one statement which is made by the central limit theorem. The second and most important statement is the sampling distribution of means. We said we have suppose that you have taken 100 means, right, 100 samples and their means. Those means are, will approach a normal distribution with a mean mu and a variance sigma square by n. Here the mu is, mu is the population's mean and the sigma square is the variance of the population. So let us try to understand this concept with simple example. Suppose that there are 2 lakh apples and with the, you know, a population mean, the 2 lakh apples mean is mu and a population's variance is sigma square. The 2 lakh apples variance is sigma square. Suppose that I have taken many samples maybe 1000, maybe 10,000 samples, each sample of size 36 and then calculated mean of each 36 apples and then if I calculate the mean of all the means, right? see this, for the first sample the mean is mu1, the second sample the mean is mu2, third sample mean is mu3 and the nth sample, the capital nth sample is the mu n, we have taken capital n number of samples here. So if you take mean of all these means, that will be approximately equal to the population's mean. That is one statement. First statement's explanation. The second statement, when you take n number of samples, right, capital N number of samples, the means of those samples, the mean weights of those samples are going to form a normal distribution or they approach a normal distribution. What that means is, there is a mean of 10, there is a mean of 20, there is a mean of 30, there is a mean of 40, like that, right? So there will be, you know, two samples which are falling in 10 mean and three samples which are falling in 20 mean, maybe, you know, five samples which are falling in you know, 30 mean, maybe, you know, around eight samples falling in 40 mean, like that. So if you, if your mean weight is growing, the number of samples are going to reduce. So, in a simple words, 
the means of all the samples you have selected are going to approach or are going to form a normal distribution so these are this is the explanation of the central limit theorem so let us try to understand this concept with a simple animation so here i have taken the population which is normally distributed so the central limit theorem is saying that whether the population is normally distributed or not irrespective of the population's distribution when you take n number of samples and take means of them and try to look at the distribution of all those means that is definitely going to be normally distributed so let us see that with an animation now for simulation purposes i have taken one population which is normally distributed we we'll look at another population which is not not normally distributed also in this case i am going to take five samples and try to take mean you know the sample size is 5 and try to take you know maybe 10000 samples and take means of all those things and try to look at the distribution again for this from the same population i will try to take 20 samples each 10000 samples and try to look at the distribution so let us try to run this and see so this is a population which is normally distributed and then i am taking five samples n is equal to 5 and take mean and trying to animate when i animate i chose five samples and then took mean and trying to plot it on a distribution plot and second sample and again mean and plotted and i am taking one more you know sampling distribution with 20 samples each if i animate now i am taking five samples and mean and 20 samples now and mean and plotting it again animating five samples 20 samples five samples 20 samples every time i am taking mean and trying to plot and see how the distribution is now i will take 10000 samples you know five sample sized 10000 samples and 20 sample sized 10000 samples and plotted it you now both have came normal distribution but when you look at the normal distributions the first one and second one you can see that in the first one the spread is more or the variance is more when the sample size is small the sampling distributions variance or standard deviation is going to be more the sample size is more the variance or the you know standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means is going to be less so let us try to understand more more things here so the mean of all these means is 16.01 the population's mean is 16 they are approximately equal that is first statement okay. and then uh, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is 1.10 and standard deviation of population is 5 the spread is less when the sample size is more now i am taking a population which is not normally distributed even when the data you know distribution is not normal that the population distribution is not normal when you take n number of samples the sampling distribution of means distribution is going to be normal the sampling distribution of means is going to be normal let us see that 10000 samples see that whether the population is normal normally distributed or not it doesn't matter the sampling distribution of means is always going to be normally distributed this is a very important concept and we will use this with an example in coming classes so let us try to see you know the same thing with a slide in a clear way see this the population's mean is 16 the population standard deviation is 5 and we can calculate the 
sampling distributions uh, standard deviation or standard error using the formula sigma by square root of n or we have a you no know, in, in the central limit theorem we have the second conclusion right the sampling distribution of means is going to have a variance of uh, sigma square by n which is nothing but standard deviation of sigma by n we can calculate the standard deviation of sampling distribution of means using sigma by square root of n which is equal to 2.5 when we calculated actual standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means it is 2.25 which is approximately equal and the second distribution also second sampling distribution also the standard deviation calculated from actual means is 1.12 using the formula the sigma by square root of n here n is 20 it is 1.12 exactly same when the sample size increases the number of samples increase the predictive power increases the you know the the predictive power you know the population's behavior can be predicted accurately so this is on uh, the second thing right when population is not normally distributed then also the same thing happened when we took number of samples n number of samples the sampling distribution of means is always normally distributed and when we calculated standard error which is nothing but the standard deviation of all the means right so which is equal to almost equal to 4.08 and 4.11 here on the second you know the sampling size 20 and the means is 2.04 and 2.06 so that's you know about the central limit theorem and its explanation thank you